What's up, YouTube? Sean the Gamer here, and last night it was just a breath of amazing fresh air. Especially, I don't have the time to watch Ring of Honor and New Japan and Lucha Underground the way I want to. Tonight, NXT TakeOver, well, last night, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3 was just an amazing event. Like, from top to bottom, everything had a purpose. I still really don't know where this almost, almost and Gargano match came from, but shit, I don't care. We got it. It was good, and I enjoyed it. I got to see Thea Trinidad, aka Valina. I think that's how they pronounced it, Valina Vega. Got to see her. I hope she's just not a valet. I hope she does actually get to get in the ring. I think the last time we saw her was against Asuka. Maybe it was earlier this year. It was a late, late 2016 or early 2017. She had a match against Asuka. It didn't go that long. But um, I just hope they let her wrestle. They need another, especially with the tournament coming up, especially if you're planning on moving up certain people. Um, it's just something that needs to happen. Just put her in the ring. But we're not here to talk about that. Five matches. I think overall the whole car went about two hours and 30-some minutes, which was perfect, 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 perfect time for this. Five matches, like I said. And every match was better and better and better and better for some reason or another i still think the women at this point should have main event it but i understand why they did we'll get to that a little bit later in this review but everything linked in the description down below facebook instagram twitter and twitch if you want to keep up with me especially tonight um summer slam seven hours six hours long i'm going to be there from the pre-show all the way to the end on twitter I don't know about any live streams. I might do like live recording. So recording all my re reactions live. Pause it once the next match goes on. Uh, start getting to the end of the match. Start giving you my live reactions or live opinions on that match. Something like that. We'll figure it out tonight. But all in all, let's get this started. The first match on the card. Well, the first thing that actually opened up the show was Code Orange. One of the people who do one of the theme songs for this show. <clears throat> They performed, got really, really hyped, got the crowd really, really hyped. And they gave a full-on performance, and that wasn't the only band that came out and performed. But they they did the opening for NXT. They came out, performed for about three, maybe like five minutes. It wasn't bad. It was just something there, something interesting, something special. And the first thing I thought to myself, I remember, I remember, I remember when they used to do this at WrestleMania. It used to be good, and now we just get Pitbull and Flo Rida, and it's like, ill. So... <laughs> Um, almost with Thea Trinidad versus Johnny Gargano. Hard-hitting match. Very good match to start the show off with. Johnny Gargano is so over with the crowd. If you really want somebody to be a Cruiserweight champion and uh, somebody who can save that division and somebody who can just do wonders for that division, Johnny Gargano is your guy. I would definitely, if you want to save that division, you need to put Gargano in it. Uh, when Champa, when Tommaso Champa comes back, you can put him on there too. They can continue their rivalry or even get the rivalry started on 205 Live, and I think that's a rivalry. Whenever it happens, people want to see, and it should be on the main stage. But this match was really, really good. It looked like Gargano was about to get the win around the end of the match. Basically, all the matches, all the matches I can sum up all night was, um. They, everybody beat the shit out of each other all night. Everybody beat the hell out of each other from, <coughs> from top to bottom. I'm talking about everybody used everything in their arsenal, it seemed like, tonight to get the win. And same thing here. Almost got all his moves in. He, I think he slapped Gargano once. He got his double knees in the corner. He tried to do the whole hanging on the thing. Gargano, he did all his stuff. Uh, we got to see a long dart. We got um, his submission moves and all that stuff. The only thing we didn't get to see is Gargano's finisher because by the time he was about to hit it, in the most disrespectful thing I've ever seen in wrestling, it one of the most it was so simple but so disrespectful. And if you didn't catch it, she threw a shirt in the ring, and the shirt was a DIY shirt. And Gargano was like, "What? Oh, you dirty!" And then by the time he did that, he got caught by. Um, he got caught by almost. He put him in a hammerlock DDT for the one, two, three, 
and almost got the win. I believe I predicted him to win just because he needed something. And he needed this win really, really badly. And he got it. Um, this whole tandem, him and uh, Valina Vega, is going to work really, really well. Uh, CN is just a prick anyways. And now he has a manager to go along with it. And she's hot. It's just going to, oh my God. This is going to be, he could be the, Mex they could be the Mexican or uh, Puerto Rican Miz and Maurice or whatever. So, really enjoyed this match. Great way to start off the show. But, uh, I just really enjoyed it. Uh, the match was just, I, I, I wish I could describe in detail like normally I would. But every, just everybody got all their stuff in and it just was good. It was just really, really good. Uh, like I said, I almost got the win. Uh, then the next match was actually for the tag team titles. Normally what they do is they'll do the, the bottom card, the undercard, and then have all three championship matches back to back to back. But you couldn't do that tonight. And once things started unfolding, you understand why. AOP versus Sanity. We thought it was going to be Alexander Wolf and Killian Dane. Killian Dane was on the apron. Uh, AOP was kind of like having their way with uh, Wolf for a little while. And then about time, he was about to make the tag to Killian Dane. He jumps off the apron. Eric Young jumps on. Tag was never made, so uh, Killian Dane technically was never in the match. So I think they're going to be free birding it. And Eric Young gets into the match. Starts running house, and then no pun intended. Insanity ensues. They just start going crazy. Um, Eric Young he hits an elbow off the top rope. I think there was one point when when uh, one of the authors of Pain members tried to give a German uh, superplex to Eric Young off the top rope, and Nikki Cross caught him by the legs. Um, so he wouldn't go, and then the other AOP member came in and tried to give him the extra power, you know, power bomb into the superplex. So he just ended up power bombing his own member, and that's when we got the uh, elbow drop. He did that, and they started diving outside. Eric Young he did a, a suicide dive. Then Alexander Wolf did a suicide dive, and then Nikki Cross out of nowhere. I love Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross should be. Just for her shenanigans and her reactions, she should be NXT Women's Champion. I still think if they were going to take the belt off Asuka at any point, it should have been in that uh, last woman standing match against um, against Nikki Cross because she technically wasn't pinned or submitted. So that you know that can kind of help a little bit if you don't want to have her lose clean. So if you still want to say she's never been pinned or never been submitted. You know, she could have lost like that, but I love Nikki Cross. I want her to be a champion so bad. But she was about to go do her little tope suicida. suicida and then uh, Paul Ellering, he jumped in, got in the way. And there was some shenanigans. I don't know how she did it, but she actually ended up... Nikki Cross actually got the ref to focus more on Paul Ellering than her. So she went to the top rope, did a crossbody on, like, Akam or Rezar, one of them. And then... He catches her as she's falling. She he catches her. Uh, Big Damo's like, oh shit! What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Ref still distracted in the ring with Paul Ellering. There's a for some reason there was a table set up on the outside. I had to leave for a few minutes to go help find clothes. Literally, we went to wash clothes earlier that day, earlier yesterday, and my mom left a whole load of clothes in the dryer. So we had to go back and get those. Came back. Uh, once we came back, we were already starting the the next match, which was Black versus a Tommy. But this match, it ended like it's, there was a table set up in the corner, like like prop laid. Not, it wasn't like uh, propped up. It was like laid flat and by the barricade. And all this was the only thing that really disappointed me about this was the set. It was just a raw set with NXT logos on it. It was literally just the Raw or SmackDown set. But I feel like they did that for a reason to try to see how some of these people interests and things like that how they work on the main stage. So expecting it's be expecting a few callers from NXT pretty soon. Uh and then the match ended. They like I said, they all did the Tope Suicidas. 
Eric Young and Alexander Wolf. They got him back. They got one of the AOP members back into the ring. They did a tag team move. I think it was kind of like uh, a brain buster ish type move. I can't. I can't really recall. I just watched the match again, but then I just watched Oscar versus Amber Moon again. So that's probably why I can't remember. Um, they did that. One, two, three. Sanity is your new tag team champions. They're celebrating, and then all of a sudden. Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish come out of nowhere and just starts beating up whoever is in the ring. So they just started doing all their tag team moves. You got everybody on commentary. Corey Graves was on commentary for this match. Everybody was on commentary just like, oh my god, it's Red Dragon. One of the most decorated teams in all of the world. They won championships everywhere. They have championship pedigree. They're here to take over the division so that was the first reveal of the night is we are going to get red dragon we all expected it kyle o'reilly kyle o'reilly and bobby fish both made separate um nxt debuts in a match against Hideo not Hideo time against alistair black over the last couple of weeks now they are fully a team and they're going to eventually win those titles away from sanity um the next match on the card was Hideo Itami versus Aleister Black. Whoever sings his intro for Aleister Black, they came out, they did it. Did you get over me? I fall. <laughs> they did all that stuff. <clears throat> and one of the guys who looked, who did, first of all, has anybody ever made the comparison of Alexander Wolf and that nigga from Twisted Metal? First of all. And then the other guy in the band who does Aleister Black's theme song. He did, the, he did like this on all our screen, but his mouth was like all the way on his face. He looked like Majin Buu or like Super Buu when he gets super pissed and just, ah, and that's what he looked. He looked possessed. He looked like a demon. <laughs> and I mean, I guess it fits because of the music that he does, but he looks like a straight demon. Anyways, this match started with them literally kicking the shit out of each other. They both tried to get boots. Then they just started chopping each other. Then they just started doing all these different holes. They started going back and forth. Like, I'm going to kick you first. No, I'm going to duck. Then I'm going to kick you. No, I'm going to duck. Then I'm going to kick you. Well, I'm going to do a leg sweep. I'm going to block your leg sweep. <laughs> they just started going back and forth with each other. And they just beat the hell out of each other. And, um, Alistair Black ended up with, like, either a, a fractured nose, broken nose, because that thing was leaking for the rest of that match. Uh, like just stiff shots everywhere, hard blows. Hideo went for the GTS, but it got blocked at one point around the end of the match. Like I said, everybody got all their stuff in, so everything you expect out of these two, you saw uh, around the end of the match happen. Um, a time he was going for the GTS, and the crowd popped really hard for that. But he revert uh, a Tommy, not a Tommy. Black got out of it. Just some more devastating kicks. At one point, he, I think he got out the GTS and then just did this spinning heel kick. It wasn't the Black Mask, and he just a level. It just floored a Tommy, and everybody was like, "Go for the pin! Go for the pin!" But he started climbing the rope just to make the match go a little bit longer. And then I think there was another. Just some more kick attempts from Atami. Just some more hard strikes. And then Atami just got big head. He was like, respect me. Respect me. Because he just started kicking the shit out of Alistair Black. Excuse my French. He just started beating the shit like with the kicks, the chops, all the blows, everything you expect. He just starts, they just beat the shit. He was like, you will respect me. You will respect me. And he turned around and right into a black mask, like I believe. And he just, he, he screwed himself over. But it was just a good match, as you can see right here. I should have scrolled up so you can see. Um, oh, wait, that's a spoiler. Uh, where is it? Oh, God. Well, whatever. Um, they, they just beat the shit out of each other. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Here we go. Like I said, the match started off with these two just trying to kick the shit out of each other. Um, it was just one point in the match. At the end of the match, he just Atami just got too overconfident, got too cocky. We're all he started screaming, "Respect me!" Black mask, one, two, three. Alistair Black is just sitting there. He did his little Indian fall after the match. He's just like, "What the hell did I just go through? Why are these people so good?" <laughs> first Kyle O'Reilly, no, first Bobby Fish, then Kyle O'Reilly. Now this, I, I, I can't do this no more. He just sat down. and was like. I need to re I need to rethink my hobby. I need to rethink my life. I need to rethink my career. 
and it was just a great match. So then we go on to probably my unexpected match of the night because at this point I'm like, okay, like I said, Hideo Tommy versus Alistair Black is gonna be match of the night. Nope, we get Oscar versus Ember Moon. Now, at this point, I've, I realized something. Oh no! I realized this during the Bobby Roo, uh, the Bobby Roo Drew McIntyre match, but Oscar really highlighted this for me. All the champions, for the most part, down at NXT, have been bad shit crazy. <laughs> Oscar's crazy. Oh, Oscar's a dick. Bobby Roo's a prick. Sanity's crazy. Samoa Joe was crazy. Finn Balor, he had a demon. He was crazy. Uh, Sami Zayn, he was saying he was normal, but he didn't last very long. Nakamura, crazy. Oscar, crazy. Um, Charlotte, she thinks she's a queen, crazy. Um, Paige, see what happened with her, crazy. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa of DIY turned out to be crazy AOP big crazy monsters that everybody's crazy in NXT and then you look at this picture right here of Oscar it doesn't help the case of say oh no all the NXT champions are crazy look at this look at this face look at Amber Moon she's in pain and if you look at this face it's like yeah huh. another day in the office but it wasn't another day in the office these two Amber Moon has done her research, and every time Oscar tried to do something, Amber Moon countered. But then it's like Oscar is like fighting somebody on hard mode or extra extra hard mode in a fighting game. So you counter, and then it's like a critical counter, and then she just goes in and just starts beating the shit at Amber Moon. At one point early in the match, they're outside the ring. Amber Moon gets caught with a. Uh, uh, goddamn F- fish hook suplex on the on the steel ramp. So her arm has been is pretty much out of it the whole match. Oscar keeps working over that arm for Oscar lock or that uh, chicken wing, not the chicken wing, that arm bar. We the Amber Moon's biggest problem in this match is she didn't come in with a submission move. If she would have came in this match with at least one or two good submission moves, she probably would have won, but she didn't. That's why she lost. So, Ember Moon, Oscar, they're going back and forth. Oscar is really getting the better of Ember Moon. Ember Moon is trying. She keeps countering. At one point, Ember Moon, she just really does get the better of Oscar and hits her with the eclipse. And you should, the the sequence of faces that Amber did. When she was hitting that eclipse, the first one that she actually hit was hilarious. Her first look was like, yeah, bitch, I got you now. Hit her with the eclipse. She goes for the cover. Start like, I got it. Tongue all out. She's doing her best of Jordan impression. (laughs) Goes for the cover. One, two, Oscar kicks out. I started to cry for Amber Moon because the look on her face. Because she thought she won. Like I said, she's doing, I got it. One. To kick out, and then her look, her face went from happy to I'm about to get my ass whooped. I can't do this. I can't do this. So she tries to hit another one, another eclipse. Uh, she does that thing. Oscar gets up, puts the ref in her way again. Ref gets out the way. Amber hits a crossbody instead. Um, gets the one and the two, doesn't get the cover. Um, then there, no, then Oscar gets the roll up, grabs the shorts, one, two, referee sees, uh, Oscar grabbing Amber Moon's tights, says, no, 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 um, then Oscar's like, no, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't do it, bam, super kick, <laughs> she gets caught with a super kick, right into the cover, one, two, kick out again, <laughs> Amber is, Amber is like livid. She's crying. She's like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I think at this point, uh, she tries to go for another eclipse or something like that, but Asuka's laid out. No, she goes to pick up Asuka at this point. 
and Oscar's laying in wait. She uh, gets Amber Moon in a arm bar. Amber Moon gets into a cover. One, two. And Oscar pops up, put her in the Oscar lock. Amber's trying to escape, but to no avail. She had to tap out, and Oscar is still undefeated. I'm telling you, the last five, six minutes of this match, I was praying. <coughs> I was praying to the Lord up above, please let Oscar win. <laughs> please let Oscar win, because it just started to get to the point where Oscar, where Amber Moon was doing all these baby face things. Oscar tried to put her in the Oscar lock earlier in the match, and she reversed it and tried to put her into an Oscar lock. She tried to put an Oscar into an Oscar lock. It really is a cross-faced chicken wing with her, with her body scissors. But they did everything like they beat the shit out of each other. And Oscar came this close to losing the title. That close. If Amber Moon would have had her own submission move, she could have probably made Oscar tap out. But she did. And she paid for it. And Oscar is still. Your women's champion in NXT. And for the main event of the evening, which I don't even think I can, sh- well, it doesn't matter. We have Bobby Roode versus Drew McIntyre, which should have been the second to last match on the card, but we got this ending. <coughs> uh, they beat the hell out of each other. Need- needless to say, like I said, everybody got all their stuff in tonight. Everybody looked good. End of the match happened. Uh, Drew hit the Claymore. On Bobby Roode. Didn't work. Bobby Roode rolls out the ring. Because he tried to hit another one on him. Starts getting the upper hand on McIntyre. McIntyre. Um, he's down. He's hurt. Then Bobby Roode tries to hit another. He hits a glorious bomb. Doesn't work. He gives him back up. Tr- hits another glorious bomb. After the first one didn't work. And only got a two count. He hits another one. He rolls over, still has him look hooked, and he's about to hit another glorious bomb. But Drew pushes him away, get a little bit of offense in, and then hit him with a Claymore. One, two, three. Um, Drew McIntyre is your new NXT champion. So this match, it was decent. It was okay. Should not have been the main event. It was still a very good match between these two. But the ending is what got everybody talking, as you can see on your screen. Adam Cole, baby! Bobby Fish and Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly came in, jumped Drew McIntyre, got boot Bobby Roode out of the ring, and we all thought that it was going to be Roderick Strong that comes in and costs Bobby Roode the title or costs uh, Drew McIntyre the title. Nope, Adam Cole, Adam Cole, he just comes in, beats the shit out of everybody. Red Dragon helps, and they go off uh, the air with with. They go off the air with uh, Adam Cole holding the NXT title over Drew McIntyre and drops the belt, and then they just proceed to go off the air with them. Those three standing uh, gloriously, no pun intended, in the middle of the ring over a fallen champion. So Adam Cole has officially made his debut. Um, This is supposed to be leading up to well, I guess it did lead up to a little faction of Ring of Honor guys. They brought up Ring of Honor a few times. And I, overall, I want, I want, I really, really want to say this was a perfect show. I really, really want to say this was a perfect show. But some, there were just a few things missing. Like I said, the match itself between Bobby Roode and Drew McIntyre, even though it was really, really good, like I give it like 3.5 out of 5 stars if I had to give it a rating system, almost 4 stars. I would give it a really high match score. I'll give Oscar versus Ember Moon like 4.5. Everything else on the undercard was like 3.5 or 4 stars as well. I just think Oscar and Ember Moon should have main evented. I understand why they didn't main event, but they didn't main event. It was just a few little, like if the set was a little bit different, it wasn't just a plain raw set. If just a few little things, I could say this was a perfect show, but it was the most perfect show we've gotten in WWE all year, I want to say. I got to go see what the other takeovers were like, but this was amazing. Especially after all the bullshit and all the fuckery we've been getting on the main roster, this was life. And now I have to sit and watch six hours of SummerSlam. I'm thinking about watching NXT like twice. 
<laughs> I'm thinking about watch, take, watching Takeover twice because I'd rather do that and then sit down and watch all the shenanigans and the bullshit that's about to happen tonight at SummerSlam. But I got people texting me. Uh, I got shit to do. I just wanted to get this review recorded. <coughs> Hopefully it'll be up before SummerSlam or before Monday Night Raw between there recording this Sunday morning. Like I said before, everything linked in the description box down below. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. If you want to drop a dono, help out the channel, there is a PayPal link a PayPal link linked in the description as well. What did you guys think of TakeOver? Um, I'm sorry I couldn't get like as descriptive as I wanted to in these matches. But everybody got all their moves in. Everybody beat the hell out of each other tonight. It was just a great show. If I have to give it an overall rating, I'd probably give it like a 7.5, 8 out of 10. Just because there was a few things that I would have changed up. And I'd probably go more in depth on that once I review the whole weekend. Review SummerSlam. And we go from there. <clears throat> But, huh, like I said, comment down below what you thought. What was your favorite match on this card? What match did you think was going to steal the show? And which match do you actually think stole the show? Um, Like I said, I thought Black versus Atami was going to steal the show. But it ended up being, in my opinion, Amber Moon versus Asuka stealing the show. Everybody, well, we have two new champions uh, two new sets of contenders for those championships. Asuka is still on her reign of dominance. It's just a good time to be in NXT. It's a good time to be a fan of NXT. And I'm really looking forward to this next phase of the yellow brand under the WWE umbrella. Share this video out with your friends so they can get in on the conversation as well. If you're new here, please subscribe. And if you are new here and you did subscribe, also hit that notification bell to know when a new video goes live on your news feed. Whew. Leave a like if you enjoyed this review. Leave a dislike, but also leave a comment saying why you dislike this video so we can improve in the future and give you the guys the content that you deserve. All that being said, I am Sean the Gamer, and I am out of here.